a heart attack. Fast fatal heart impact. Past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and packs. I back up my actions. Fact, don't ask. Grab reactions. Jacked attack with every word. Then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose. Cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused. Call the shots and they produce. I ain't boss. I'm finally loose. Pick a new soul bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a piece now. Y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for defeat. Alrighty, hello, hello everybody. This is Kirusho here, and now, before we do continue, let us give a brief little review. In the last part, we had our four characters, who, they have all found themselves in the same reality, and they were all quite ecstatic and happy. Now, the way things are set up here is very weird. Aliens exist and they try to kill humanity. Humanity, they bounce back from extinction and in the following years, became more, more militaristic as a result. Basically putting more efforts into medicine and weaponry, along with even space travel. Along with that humanity, they do actually have alien technology they have studied and reverse engineered, which has made its way into day-to-day -day life. Now, with that, humanity here, they're also a bit more intriguing. They're a lot more serious. And everybody, they have learned that. As the four, they stayed here for about a month so far. And in that amount of time, the incident with Deku's injuries was investigated. However, nothing was ever came from that. There, were, there was no way to understand who exactly could have done it, who could have stabbed Deku. So the incident was somewhat tucked away for right now. They're going to need to look into this more. Since whoever might be on that base, who may have done this to him they could still be hiding around. And right now, it's going to be just flagged as interesting. Now, with that, we actually do have the four. Who they do meet up at Bako and Deku's house. Now, wherever they do meet up, you do actually have where they do open the door. Bako greeting Bakugo, or... Katsuki greeting Bakugo and Izumi at the door, and the two they would walk in. As once the door is closed, the four they do somewhat throw a little bit of a party. They've been doing this every week so far, and it does help to calm them down, along with even give them all a reason to be in the same area all at once, since this is technically on civilian time. Now, with that, we actually do have with the four, they do have dinner together. And they even are all talking about a few things and trying to uncover more memories. And we do actually have currently with Deku, who is sitting down with a drink in his hand. Okay, okay. Um, hear this out. Hear this out. Apparently here, me and Bakugo, for our honeymoon, you're never going to guess what we did, Izumi. Hmm. I feel like I know this. I feel like I know this. What did you two do? Okay, okay. We went back to the exact same town we went to when we were back during training. I mean, we went to this place nearby we always talked about. We just stopped by for a quick visit, and we even talked to some of the people who taught us there. Afterwards... We had a bit of a vacation. I mean, backpacking across Europe, that was actually pretty cool. Even, well, just doing what we needed to to survive with survival training. Yeah, that sounds a bit strange for a honeymoon. And how long did that take you guys? Mm, we had to stop it for three months, but I mean, it seemed crazy at the time. Really? Yeah. Actually, it seems weird. You'll never guess what also happened with our, the whole memory situation for us. Uh, do tell. Apparently, this version of us in our free time, we do a lot of combat training. And I mean combat training. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. 
We even have matches with the one couple next door. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not uncommon. I mean, apparently I also participate in the fighting tournaments. And it's not illegal. Uh Uh-huh. You're discovering quite a lot. Am I? Yeah, Izumi, it's not honestly that bad. Really? That coming from you? Izumi, it's not that hard to believe, is it? Okay, okay, it's just... Everything you guys have all talked about. I mean, Bakugo's been here for a few months. Him, I can believe, but you two... You're just going for it, aren't you? Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, you guys are regaining memories fast. Oh, are we? Yeah, I mean, it's not that bad, is it? Deku turned to Bakugo. And he does get to say in an, in another language, do they think, or does she think that they might know? And Bakugo is just going to turn directly to Izuku. I was just going to say back in the exact same language, she's not too sure. However, maybe if they know this language, then it could be possible, since he is speaking out loud. Now, Bakugo is going to somewhat slap Deku on the arm. And Deku, he does get somewhat laugh, as the two, well, Katsuki and Izumi do stare at these two, confused by what they might be saying, since they're not too sure what language that is. Now, there is actually Izumi, who she does somewhat get a bit of a glimpse of a memory, since apparently these two have done this quite often. Now, Izumi, she does get thrown to a certain memory, and it does feel strong. I mean, just the memories connected to an incident like this, they're just all popping up now. And Azumi is just going to have to study herself out. Her bring her other hand up to her head, talking about how that one was, uh, bad. Was it? Oh, yeah. I just got a slide so- show of that bullshit. Christ, I need another drink. Now, Bako here going to stand up. Him walking over to a cabinet and talking about how he'll get it. Him walking back over and going to pour it for Izumi. Before he does go to drop an ice cube inside. Him going to sit down and talking about how it isn't all that bad. I mean, what was it? Some of the weirdest shit he has seen has actually just been from the way people interact with each other here. Uh, how so? Well, I mean... Take Izumi, for example. From what I understand about it, me and her work in the same department. I mean, we operate the way we do. You two do. Yeah. Take it like this. We handle threats, and we are even teachers. What we do is we handle certain special investigations and incidents. What kind of incidents? Those are classified. That being what Balko does say. And the way he does say it, it actually does catch all of them off guard. Balko is somewhat trying to change his tone again, talking about how he's fucking with them. But seriously though, talking about it probably isn't the best idea. What do you mean? Well, it's, uh, it's depressing. That's what I mean. The incidents aren't good. Izumi, she's still stationed close to home, though. Since there was, um, well, she was involved in an accident. And they were still trying to evaluate her mentally, just before you guys popped up. Really? Yeah. She was hit by some sort of sonic device, but otherwise she's been fine. So, that's why she's on Earth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, granted, it's not uncommon for just these random devices to be found on Earth. But it was still interesting. 
She checked out an event, and the event was bookmarked and classified as a special hazard. Listen, you guys already knew about it here, so I'll tell you anyways. The aliens, they try to send weapons. Well, I don't even know if you can classify them as robotic in nature anyway. But they definitely weren't organic. Whatever they were made out of, we don't know. They landed in our oceans. And then they just started to destroy. I mean, anything short of an orbital strike and a nuclear blast? It doesn't do the trick. And I mean, I'm talking high levels of just... Pure destruction. You basically get to send three or four nukes to take them down. You might as well just level the city yourself if you're just going to have one of these things here. Honestly, I mean, I've seen some of the footage and it's not good. Then there's also the pathogens they try and use on us. The animals you just send here aren't natural. Certain ecosystems have been disrupted because of animals like that. Some have been changed entirely. I mean, hell, I don't even know what I can point out. I've seen a lot of it, okay? I, I just don't want to talk about this anymore. Now, all three of them, they do go to look directly at Bakugo. He's seen it all? Shit. Well... His memories, he had all of them when he came here, right? So, maybe he's just worried about that all. Now, Bulko, he is going to stand up. Talking about how he needs a cigarette. He'll be right back. I'm going to walk outside. And everybody, they do just sit there. As Bulko, he does actually watch Azumi. Whenever he does, going to stand back up. She's just going to give him a bit of a glance. And that glance, it was a bit suspicious. I mean, Izumi found that to be weird. So, he woke up here with his memories intact. Okay. So, that is strange. But there was the way he phrased that and the way he was talking. That wasn't second-hand experience, was it? Okay, she bullshits people for a living as a spy. But she doesn't know if he was just bullshitting her. Okay, this is... this is odd. Now, Izumi is just going to point out how she's going to join Bakugo real quick. As she's going to stand up. As Deku and Katsuki, they are someone ignoring her. The two going back to a conversation. And the moment Izumi does go step outside, there is where the two, they do go to somewhat go back to the native language. Ah, Katsuki, this is a little bit weird, don't you think? What do you mean? I mean, the reality in general. Hearing a lot about it, it's just... It's strange, right? It is, yeah. But, then again, you have to th remember where we came from. That's fair, I guess. But I mean, aliens, weapons, just all this stuff. It seems so strange. Well, it is to us, but it's normal here. Yeah, that's just the thing. Speaking of normal here, are you going to bring up the idea of what's going on with us? I will, yeah. I mean, we've spent enough time together to regain a lot of our memories. But that's just the thing. I'm not so sure. So sure of what? Of a lot. That's my problem. Okay. How exactly... Okay, I'm just going to be very blunt with this and just flat out say it, okay? Alright, fine. Go ahead. Uh, 
how are we supposed to be together like how we are if we're jumping through the different versions of ourselves who are together? Um, explain a bit more. Okay, so the year we spent in the city was real. Yes. And the year we spent... Well, the years we've spent together here, together and married, they're real, too. But not to us. Oh, I see your reasoning. You're thinking that just because we love each other here in other realities, we may be influenced by those versions of ourselves. Yeah. I mean, you've seen it with Bakko, haven't you? Yeah, that is actually worrisome. He seems laser-focused. And I'm a bit worried. Now, Bakko should have to stand up. And Deku, he does have to stand up as well. As one of her Bakko, she was going to go walk out front to talk to him. Deku stopped her. What is it? He needs time to think. What are you talking about? That's how you are here. That's how he is. Bakko, he likes to think. And apparently now that routine consists with the cigarettes. He needs time to do that. That's what you do. You're easy to anger once you're pissed off, but when you cool down, you cool down. Are you saying that I'm hot-headed? Uh... Listen, that's up for debate. Then again, I'm not going to argue with you since you can throw me over your shoulder. That's what I thought. Bakko bring her hand out to Deku's face. And patting his cheek. Talking about how he needs to know when to talk and when not to. See? It's easy. Now, Deku does go to someone start laughing. And Bakko, yeah. Trying to keep a straight face like that... That's not easy either. The two have had somewhat a few drinks, so right now, trying to break the tension is heavily needed. Now, that is actually where we will cut outside. Where Bakko, he is sitting down and fumbling something in his hand. As he does go to flick and light a cigarette. Him closing his lighter, as he does go to put it in his pocket. Now, Izumi, she was going to walk outside. Her asking him exactly if he's okay. As she's going to walk across the, well, the deck and go to sit down on the staircase. Her asking Bakko that question. As he's going to turn to her and ask her if she wants a cigarette. Oh, um, I don't. You do here. Oh, do I? Yeah. That's why you get the headaches. That... That does explain that. Yeah. You're having a craving for a cigarette, Izumi. How do you know that? Because hmm? I've worked with you for months, Izumi. I've known you for... A while. Yeah, I know that. However, I don't believe that you've known me for a while. I think you've known me for longer, haven't you, Bakugo? Now, Bakugo, he does go so and stand up. Him stepping forwards and still the cigarette in his mouth. Him going to stretch his legs, telling Azumi that he doesn't know what she's talking about. He's been here for almost a year. And in that amount of time, he's known her. In that amount of time, he's seen how his cousin... And his best friend, they were together. How they got together. And how exactly he and Izuku have met. Especially the day he met his best friend whenever they were younger. Now, Bako, the moment he is going to say those words, he is going to turn back around. Sh shit. When you were younger? Bakugo? 
How long have you been here? Actually, been here. Izumi, fuck. Okay, listen, I know how that sounded, but I just, I know everything about this version of myself. That's it. Bakugo? How long have you been here? I've been here longer than a year. I'll tell you that much, but just don't worry about it, okay? We'll jump again soon, and things will be all right. Bakugo? Isn't he going to stand up? And going to pull a gun from her belt. Her ask him again, how long has he been here? Jesus. Uzumi, put the gun down. No. Answer the question. Bakugo, how long have you been here? You've avoided that question like the plague. You've answered vaguely. And the stories you tell, they seem to be vivid. Some seem to be like spirits. Not just from reliving and replaying them in your head. There's a feeling I get. And I believe I know what it is. I'm suspicious of you, Bakugo. Now tell me, how long have you been here? Now, Bakugo, he does get a somewhat just put out his cigarette. Him flicking it to the ground and going to put it out with his boot. Him telling Izumi, he'll tell her. Just put the gun down. As he's going to start walking back over towards the stairs. And Izumi, her hand doesn't shake. But she feels like her hand is trembling. And right now she's going to put her finger on the trigger. As Balko, he does walk directly up and the gun does go to touch his chest. Izumi, put the gun down. You're not going to shoot me. How do you know? Because I know you. I've known you since we were children. I've known you for just about 20 years. Now, Izumi, she is going to lower the gun. You, you've been here for 20 years? Yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> I know how bad that sounds. And, uh... Honestly, I'm glad to see you guys again. Because, uh, there's been a lot going on. <sighs> I first woke up here whenever I was just about to turn six. I woke up screaming. I called it a nightmare. I was so confused being who I was at the time thinking I was just some kid who had a dream but then the memories started to come back more and more and I was more convinced that what happened was real I was told for a while that it wasn't called an overactive imagination I mean it would make sense but uh I knew it was real. I knew everything I experienced up to that point was real. And this new reality I could consider to be fake, but it's real now. Izumi, I met Izuku whenever I was in school. He met my cousin whenever she and him were going to go to basic. I know that they were introduced a few times before, but they officially started to get closer around that time. And that was almost a decade ago. Now, just please, let's just talk and keep this a secret. If those two think that we're going to be longer here than that amount of time, they'll get cozy. And this life, it's not when you get cozy in, Izumi. Not for us. Now, Izumi, she's going to just sit back down. 
20 fucking years. Jesus. Now, Bucko, he does it back down as well. As is tell her that, yeah, it wasn't easy. Everything he experienced from Night City, he was told that they were just nightmares. And doctors believed him to be sick. However, he just tried to hide it. He got better at doing that. Along with that, there was actually the fact that he was considered to be very much intelligent for his age. I mean, being able to learn another language by that time, that was seen as interesting. And then there was also the fact that, with his experience in the other worlds, he used that here in combat. Now, Izumi does hear Bakugo, so I'll go over it. There was the day that they met, and it was actually just before she did jump into this version of herself. Huh? What do you mean? <sighs> there are times when I don't think you guys will appear. The first time we were all ever in the same room together, I almost lost my fucking shit. I mean... You guys were just looking at me funny. Like I had my pants down or something. And I, I don't know. Okay? I don't know what to tell you. The fact that I saw you guys there whenever I came to the base and a mysterious injury, I had to just think. It was, it was you guys. It was you guys. That's the whole problem. And it was. I've gotten my hopes up before. I've almost died before. And I've learned a lot about this world by living in it. So, Izumi, whenever I tell you to trust me on something, please, trust me. Now, Izumi does go look up towards Bakugo. And there is the look in his eye. The look of a well-trained soldier, someone who's calm and collected, but there's something in his eyes that she just can't place. Something that is hard to really put into words. However, it's Bakugo's hands where he goes to try and pull another cigarette. His hand is actually shaking. And then she just won't realize what it is. Bakugo, he's absolutely terrified of what's going to happen. He thought that he was stuck here. He thought for some time all of what happened was just a bad dream and a nightmare. That he had to try and put that behind him and just move forwards in this world, but now it's back. He wasn't just some crazy kid. Now, Bakugo, he does get a look from Izumi. And Izumi, she does kind of somewhat stand up. Talking about how she's just gonna take a second to process that. Now, Bucko, he does somewhat understand. As we do actually have where she's gonna stand up and go over up on top of the stairs. Going to look up towards the sky and trying to think about that. As Bakugo, he does get to walk over to a table and grab a bottle. Him grabbing it, and then going to sit back down by the staircase. As he's going to pour another drink, and talk about how he likes to come out here sometimes and look at the stars. Hmm? What do you mean? There's always a beauty to them. Something can come up there, something can come down from up there that can try and kill us. But even then, it's just a beautiful sight. It is. But it's also a bit more disturbing to look at now. Because there's something up there. Because we know there's something up there. Yeah. That's just how it is. Now, with that we do actually have back inside. Where Katsuki and Deku, they have both been still chatting. 
And right now, there are a few things that are going through their minds. As they're actually as Ordeku, he does going to bring up the one idea again. About how maybe if it's not, well, him, then maybe it's someone using his face, right? I mean, that seems more likely. They give you a familiar face to look at. I mean, even if they were that powerful or able to just do that to us, then they probably wouldn't be from our worlds, right? So, there is that possibility. I mean, yeah, but still. There's still a lot to try and rule out there. That is true. However, I think that right now, we should all be okay. No. Bako should someone plop down next to Deku on the chair. And she's going to talk about how maybe they should just watch a movie and try to just put that on hold for right now. That conversation, that is. Maybe you're right. I mean, it's just everything's been normal for this world so far. Nothing's been off. And this place has been just secure. So what do we do then? There is not much to do. Other than just... Wait. Are you sure that's a good idea? Now. Baku is going to turn. Her actually going to kiss Deku and tell him that... Right now, it's all they really can do. Ash is going to pull away. Telling him that for right now... They are all back together. And waiting... Might be the only way for all of them to jump together. So, perhaps, this world is a bit of a rest for them. I mean, that would explain why nothing crazy has happened so far, right? No robots from other worlds wearing their faces. No other version of themselves. No monsters. No nothing so far. So maybe, right now, they are okay. This world has its own problems, but that's because those problems are already set into motion, right? So, if those problems pop up here, then it won't be problems associated with them. Now, Deku, he does like that explanation. And he actually is going to wrap Bakugo up in his arms. Him actually going to talk about how maybe she's right. Now, the two dudes are going to laugh. And right now, there is where they do go to put on a movie. Now, with that being said, we do actually have where Bako and Izumi, they were still talking outside. However, by the time they're done, they do just gotta leave. Since Bako, yeah. He dropped a lot in Izumi. And Izumi, she's still trying to make sure she doesn't fumble what she just heard. Everything that just got laid onto her with what Bako has been through, it was a lot. Now that it was all out in the open, he started to just tell her a few things. Get her caught up to speed. Let her know how she was in this world. And right now, Izumi, she has a lot swirling through her head. Especially because her and Bakugo, they were going to go out on a date very soon. And, well, it got put back because of her injuries. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.